Welcome back everyone. So we finished off our app um, until now with, well, having our list here and we're getting this data from our Weber data file here. Um, it's time to add a little bit more dynamic to this whole application. And I will start by introducing a service which will do our data handling and which will be later extend to reach out to an actual RESTful application to fetch the weather data. So first, let me create the service in this weather folder here and I will just call it weather.service.ts. And again, this is this naming convention where you also describe what's inside this file. Next, and I don't want to compile, thank you. Next, I will then export this class here export class weather service and I will make it injectable because later on we will need access to HTTP inside here. Now if you're not familiar with Angular 2 services here's a quick wrap up but I would recommend you have a look at my other videos on this channel. Angular 2 services allow us to have centralized places in our application, which we may access from all our components or directives or basically all our classes, and which handle certain things which will need to be accessible from several places. So, for example, this service will later on go out to the internet and fetch the data. We don't want to do this in a component because this is not really great practice. We want to outsource this now service because we might have several places in our app where we need that functionality. Therefore, services are a great place to centralize such things. Now, regarding the annotations and injectable annotation here, Angular 2 has a great dependency injection framework built in. This means that, and you will see this in this video, we can define in classes in the constructor which objects we need for this class to work correctly. And Angular 2 will automatically yeah, find out how to create this class and create an instance of this class and pass this to this in constructor. And this is called dependency injection by providing the dependencies where we need them. And such a service is something we want to inject. Now, to be honest, that is not why we need this injectable annotation here, even though it might look like this would allow us to inject this service. But actually, we would be able to inject it even without this annotation. We need this, though, to be able to inject something into this service. Because injecting service into services is possible, but only if we add this annotation or any metadata. That is how Angular 2 works. When we inject something in a component, we don't need add injectable because we already have add component. So that's the theory in a real quickly summed up way. If you feel like, well, I have an understand a bit, that is okay. I have specific videos in my on this channel in my Angular 2 playlist where I develop deeper into this and explain how this in dependency injection works and also how you can control how many instances of an object you have. So definitely check this out. You will find links in the description, of course. So this is my weather service. And at the moment, I won't implement the HTTP functionality yet, but I will create a new method here, get weather items. And this method should be responsible for, well, doing this, fetching our weather items. So all this will do here is it will return our weather items we have set up in our weather.data file. So this does basically exactly the same as we're doing here. Now you might ask, why do we create a separate service for this? Again, as I said, to centralize functionalities, do not repeat yourself. And also you might change the way you get weather items. Imagine you're using this in three different components and you would have to replace the code in each of them. Therefore, it's a, it is a good practice to store this in one central place, this class here, in this way, in this example. So back in my Weber list component, where I'm actually doing this manually at the moment, what I will do here is I will add a constructor And in this constructor, I will say that I want 
to create a new private property which will be accessible in this complete class here. This is just a shortcut to create a field for a class in TypeScript. And I will give this field a name of, let's say, Weber service. This is totally up to you. And then I will specify that this should be of type Weber service. Now, this is not optional. This is important. This tells AngularTube that we need an object of type Weber service for this class to work correctly. Now, the constructor is, of course, called by AngularTube because AngularTube creates our components. And as I said, dependency injection will make sure that we receive such an object here. Then what we can do here is we can access this private property we created and here the get Weber items method. And this will get us all the Weber items. If we have a look at our application, we will see that it is broken. Why is that? Well, because we tell Angular 2 we want an object of type Weber service, but at the moment, Angular 2 does not know how to create such an object. In order to tell Angular 2, what I need to do is I need to add a new metadata to this component here, the providers configuration here. And this will be an array, just as the directives, where I define all the providers this component or this class needs. And providers are simply just well, the types of the objects I want to inject. So in this case, Weber service and make sure to have this capital case at the beginning. Also make sure, because it's done automatically for me here, to add the import to this Weber service to your Weber, the Weber, Weber service file you created here. So this will now, and we can already see this if we load, allow this app to work correctly. This is how we use services in Angular 2 in a very quick way here, of course. And this is the basic um, service we will use throughout this app later on, of course, to also reach out to the internet and fetch real weather data. See you in the next videos. Bye.